Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to deconstructing Americanized Chinese cuisine with a shot at the crab wontons or crab rangoon from P.F. Chang's. For those new to the channel, in this series, we have been deconstructing iconically Americanized dishes from Chinese cuisine and then seeing what it might look like if we were to cook the dish through the lens of more traditional Chinese wok cooking. For those unfamiliar, crab rangoon is a wonton dumpling dish commonly found in American Chinese cuisine on the small bites menu, which features a cream cheese and crab based filling that is deep fried for a crispy finish. Since wonton wrappers contain egg, they then puff up and blister very nicely in a deep fry, not unlike the way an egg roll does. Some may know that a wonton wrapper is essentially just an egg roll wrapper cut into a smaller shape. Crab Rangoon, not unlike a number of other American Chinese dishes like Mongolian beef or Singapore street noodles, actually has no real affiliation with Rangoon, which is the capital of a region in Myanmar or Burma, and in fact was invented here in the States. So I will preface this all by saying that there really is only so much that we can do with a dish that contains cream cheese, which is just about the most American thing that you can squeeze into a dish. For our version today, though, we're going to be drawing some inspiration from a few of my favorite, more traditional Chinese dumpling recipes that we've done in the last few years, and include a number of aromatic veggies and spices to bring our wontons to life. This today will be some white pepper, chili crisp oil, and baby bok choy, in lieu of the bell pepper that the P.F. Chang's version calls for. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we're kicking things off with the aromatic veggies of our filling today to add some depth of flavor to our wontons. This is four cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger and three green onions sliced up thinly. These hopefully should look fairly familiar to those following along with this series as the core aromatic veggies that we often include in most of our savory Chinese dishes. Then next to round this out is one of my favorite additions to pretty much any savory dumpling really, which is four ounces or about four heads of baby bok choy, which I'm dicing up as well. I love using bok choy as the veggie filler ingredient of a dumpling in lieu of the more commonly used cabbage because it's going to give us a little bit more of an aromatic quality when the leafy green portion starts to heat up in the fry. Alternatives like cabbage or bell pepper, as in the P.F. Chang's wonton, don't give us much of anything at all and, in my opinion, mainly just acts as a filler ingredient to stretch out the filling more. Next up, moving on to our filling, into my largest mixing bowl here is 6 ounces of cream cheese, which, if you're smart, you should pop in the microwave for about 15 seconds to loosen things up a bit so that it's easier to whisk. If you've forgotten to do this though, like me, you can also just add in a tablespoon or two of cold water and it will loosen things up just enough so that we can start whipping up our cream cheese. Then next, going into my mixing bowl is my veggies plus 8 ounces of crab meat, which by the way, right now in California is going to run you something like 15 bucks a can, so don't mess this up, Wesley. In any case, rounding out my filling today is going to be a few additions to make our filling at least a little bit more reminiscent of what a more traditional wonton might taste like. I am, however, also being very careful not to clash too much with the rich and savory qualities of our cream cheese too, so I'm mainly sticking with elements that will give us a bit of heat and brightness to balance things out instead. So, into my mixing bowl here is going to be 4 tablespoons of soy sauce and a single tablespoon of sesame oil to start, followed by a half teaspoon of white pepper and a single tablespoon of white sugar. Then next up are my acidic elements. This is a tablespoon each of Shaoxing wine and red vinegar. Now, some may recognize this as the vinegar element that we included in our Shaolin Bao recipe from a while back, which is going to be a little bit sweeter than rice vinegar and a little less rich than black vinegar. Finally, rounding this all out is going to be a tablespoon of chili crisp oil to give us a little bit of heat. Then I'm mixing this all to combine and we're moving on to our wontons next. 
All right, so diving into our wontons, there are a number of ways to fold a wonton dumpling. And to be honest, it really doesn't make a lot of difference how you fold these so long as they don't pop open in the fry. I'm going with a more classic wonton shape today, although I also know that the P.F. Chang's version features those fancy flower petal folds, which is also okay too. In either case, what's most important here is that we're about to fold a whole sh** of these things. I think I ended up doing something like 50 or 60 wontons here. So some assembly line technique is going to be really useful today. This essentially means that we're optimizing our motions by grouping each task together. So instead of making one wonton at a time, I am instead starting out by laying out 12 skins here to start, then adding a half tablespoon of filling to all 12 skins, then dabbing the edges with water on all 12 skins, folding them over 12 at a time, and I think that you get the point. This is essentially minimizing the amount of resetting that we have to do between each wonton, which I find helps speed up the assembly process when working in bulk quantities like this. Is it a perfect system? No, of course not, because we're still folding 50 wontons by hand, but this should still make things a little bit less painful though. Over on the stove, I have my fryer heating up at 350 degrees F, then I'm adding in my wontons about 20 at a time, making sure that our fryer's temperature doesn't drop below 325 or so. I'm letting these go for about 5 minutes until golden brown, then removing to a dry rack to cool while I repeat with my remaining wontons so that they don't get soggy. Finally, rounding this all out, now I am well aware that the P.F. Chang's menu calls for a spicy plum sauce, which, for what it's worth, is also a common side to a crab rangoon. Their menu photo, however, is 100% not plum sauce, but rather a sweet chili sauce, which is actually my preference anyway. This is the same stuff that we pair with things like egg rolls and other fried small bites, and is gonna pair really nicely with the creamy and savory crab filling that we just assembled. So, I'm serving this all up with a side of sweet chili sauce, and we're ready to eat. Alright, so I'll be the first to acknowledge that once again, there is only so much that we can do in an effort to making our cream cheese dumpling more authentically Chinese without, I mean, taking out the cream cheese. More importantly though, I personally really love crab rangoon because let's face it, it's cream cheese inside of fried dough, what's not to like about this? All of that said, I do think that these subtle additions that we made to our filling actually make a world of difference to the ultimate flavor profile of our wonton on the plate, too. The heavy, rich, and creamy qualities of our cream cheese is desperately calling for some acids and heat elements to balance everything out, and let's face it, we're certainly not going to get that from our crab meat. So, I think that the Shaoxing wine and red vinegar both play a huge role in cutting through the richness of our cream cheese to give us a wonton that doesn't get overwhelmingly rich and cheesy after the second or third bite. Then our chili crisp oil gives us just enough heat and MSG based umami to round out our filling without completely overwhelming the subtleness of our crab meat as well. Then finally, I think the fragrant qualities of our baby bok choy are also a nice veggie addition to give our wontons a wonderfully aromatic quality that contribute a lot more to the dish than a more simple bell pepper or cabbage would otherwise have done. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series dedicated to reproducing classic Chinese American dishes, including a whole bunch of other stuff from the P.F. Chang's menu, so definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice pop-up is now at Wondrous Brewing in Emeryville every Thursday through Sunday, so come by and say hi then if you can. More about that at wucancook.com eats. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice, internetters, and I'll see you soon.